What's good, YouTube? This your boy Chi World back at y'all again with another art tutorial, man. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that like button, comment, subscribe. Make sure you click post notifications so you will be notified every time your boy drops some heat. In today's video, we finna do a remastered video since I'm way better at it. And we're gonna make the details a lot better than the first one. So without further ado, let's jump right into this thing. Okay, first thing you wanna do, like always, you wanna drag your picture in there. And then you wanna drop the opacity down. Lock that layer, create you a new layer by clicking this blank sheet of paper. You wanna come up to your brushes. You wanna click this blank sheet of paper right here to create a new brush. Hit OK. Go to your pressure and set this to three and move this to three. And you will only get that option if you're using a, a tablet or art tablet, you know what I'm saying? Like a Wacom or a Bamboo or a UG. That's what I'm using right now is a UG while I draw right onto the monitor. So after I set my brush, I get the pressure for my lines. So I know y'all be asking what type of brush I'm using and it's just the way I draw. I draw with pressure like I start my line out light with light pressure. Then I press firm in the center and then I end my lines with light pressure and it give me that, that type of style. Okay, first thing we're going to do, we're going to drop the size of our brush. Make it a little smaller. Probably can go even smaller. Wait, no, let's let's keep it at 0 0.5 is pretty good. And we're gonna start with for some reason. I mostly start with the nose when I'm doing cartoons. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the inside of the nostrils. You want to make sure you're making you some clean lines. So rule number one, always make sure your line work is super clean. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you closing your lines off. You know what I'm saying? So when it's time to do the coloring, you won't have no problem with it not filling in certain areas. So make sure you connect in your lines. We're gonna go ahead and finish doing the outer shape of the head of his head. So go ahead and come around, bring, bring that line like that. Then 
do the hair effect with the pencil tool so what you want to do select the pencil double click it make sure you got your settings for your pencil just like mine hit OK move this color to the top so when you fill in so when you draw it'll fill in like you know what I'm saying the inner so but it'll only fill it in if you like make it where it can close off so that's what I use to color in all the black areas and I use the pencil tool to do my shading You want to make it kind of jittery so it won't be too clean when you're doing the hair. A lot of times I have to do it over because it'll do like that little blob of ink you just seen. That's why I do like smaller portions of it instead of just doing a lot with it. I make stopping points so it won't start glitching on me and messing up. tool for right now on the line work and then we're gonna go back to our brush to add some finer details that we miss so go back to your brush make sure let's make it a little smaller Add the detail right here. Let's make this as small as possible. Before you even thinking about getting to the coloring part, you gotta make sure you got your line work, your line work super tight. You know what I'm saying? You got all the detail in it. Get back out our pencil tool, move this black color to the top, and we're gonna do the 3D behind the drip 3D effect. So let's just follow this. Just create the shadows.
Now that we got the drill, uh, go back to our brush. Let's make our lines small as we can. Now we're gonna come and add the fade. So let's go ahead and make us some small lines that we can copy and paste. dragging and dropping while holding out. That's how you add a little fade effect. We're gonna clean it up in a, in a minute. Come down here put our brush again. We're gonna add some lighter hairs. We're gonna spread them a little far further apart. Then we're gonna copy that and we're gonna hold it out and we're gonna paste it again. Spreading it out. brush we're gonna just finish adding hairs to make it uh, flow in one direction and then we're gonna make our brush back bigger to like uh, the number one brush and we're gonna make the Hair going to the fade. So the closer you get to the hair, the 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 thicker you want to make your, your hairs. That's the to to the fade. And the farther you get away from this part, that's when you want to make it light as you can so it'll fade to it. So the closer, the bigger your line's going to be. And the farther away, the smaller the lines will get. So you can have a nice, cool looking fade. I think that's pretty good. Now we're going to go back to our smallest brush. And we're just going to add some hairs right here add some over here to help this out Now that we, wait, let's hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Now that we finished making our line work as clean as we can get it, what you wanna do is, you wanna select everything. You wanna come up here to object, expand appearance, 
click merge on your pathfinder so we can make all our lines one after you do that you want to drag your line work to this blank sheet of paper to make a copy lock the top copy select the second one go to your rectangle tool and you want to find a good base color to start out with hit ok and then you want to drag that color over the entire picture with your rectangle tool now you want to go to your selection tool you want to right click the color go to arrange send to back so we can send the color layer behind the line work and you'll know if you did that step right if you look over here at your layers you'll see your line work sitting on top of the color after that you want to you want to click and select everything once again and then you want to click merge on your pathfinder while you got all that selected right click on to the color after that and go to isolate select group and now we can delete this outer color when you click isolate select group every that's why I say it's good to close off your lines because every group that's closed off every section that's closed off that counts as a group so like this is a section this is a group this is a group right here so make sure you close off your lines that you know at the end of at the end of doing all your line work you're going to want to color different from certain areas so make sure you got it closed off if you want to do my coloring process so what I like to do before I find a skin tone I'm going to use, I like to go ahead and color my eyes. So let's click on to it. And I still got isolated selected group activated. We're going to hold shift to select more than one thing at a time. Stroll down, hold shift. I'm going to color this white. Click off of it. Now we're going to select everything. We're going to go to edit, edit color, adjust color balance, go to preview, and I always tweak my colors while I'm drawing. Try to give it like more of a, a reddish tone. Pretty good right there. Hit OK. Another thing we're gonna do. You see how we got colors trapped in the hair, and every time you try to click it, you all, we, you will make a mistake and click your line work. So to keep from doing that, you wanna click this drop down menu right here. Stroll down till you see your last black line work. Rolling. Okay. Now I gotta stroll up some because I went too far. Okay. And we're gonna lock all our black lines. So we're gonna hold a lock button and we're gonna stroll up and keep the top two unlocked and close it back. And now we can come over here and select this white selection tool and then we can delete all the colors out the hair without touching our black line work and it'll save you so much time from trying to go in there and do it like piece by piece when you can just try to select it all without touching your black line works because we locked it all you know what I'm saying so we're gonna just clean clean the colors out the hair. Okay. Let's 
go back to our regular selection tool and finish doing our base color isolate select group again let's finish doing the base color Every time I color lips, I always do the top lip uh, shade darker from the bottom. Okay. I think that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good start. Now what we're gonna do is lock that layer and we're gonna create a layer in between. And what I shade with, as I told you before, I shade with the pencil tool. So what we're gonna start with is our darker tones and I like to start with the eyes sometimes or the nose when I'm shading as well. So we're gonna sample the eye color we're gonna find like a purplish bluish color like right here and that's what I like to shade with as far as the inner eye we'll make it a little grayish select our pencil tool and I draw I draw my shadows so we're just gonna come right here. That's one shadow. Come to the other side. I'm gonna draw the other shadow. And I, I notice you got a little shadow right here. Shading is just as important as drawing the picture too because it can really bring out your art. So make sure you practice shading as well. So what we're gonna do sample our skin tone and we're gonna find a nice dark shadow make it a little more redder so it'll flow better and we can always tweak it as well so I put all my darks on one layer and then my mid tones I put that on another layer and then my lighter tones I just keep adding new layers like dark mid light and then just keep going from there just in case I want to change something I can just go back to that layer so let's go to our pencil tool okay I see you have a shadow under the nose and the more you do it the better you'll get at it this is like my favorite part of drawing is shading Got a shadow on his neck. So bring it back. Got a dark shadow inside his ears. And 
we're gonna leave a lot of space for our mid-tone shadows so while I'm drawing my dark shadows I keep the other the placement for the other shadows in, in mind as well so like okay and this over Once you get the hang of it, you'll it'll just start you'll just start flowing. You'll flow with it. It'll just start coming natural. Cause I always start out slow and then I just start really getting into it like just the more you look at the picture, the more you'll you'll really be like, oh there goes shadow, there goes shadow, and you'll slowly build the picture. take a lot of practice as well so I think in due time you'll get you'll get the hang of it so don't don't be discouraged like if your pictures is not turning out exactly how you want it at first just you gotta stick with it man that's everything in life anything you want to get better at if you stick with it man Anything, you can do anything just gotta grind so here's another shadow right here close this and we almost finished with our dark shadow layer
now we're gonna go to our mid tone so we're gonna create a layer under our dark layer so every layer we make will just fall under it so i'm gonna sample the skin tone again and we're gonna find a nice in between color Before I, I get started with the whole picture, I just do one shadow so I can tweak the color. Okay, let's see. Notice it come right here. Let me come back. Okay. Now before we really get into it, we're gonna tweak, tweak the color. We might as well just go ahead and tweak both of the shadows while we at it. So unlock the dark shadow, highlight everything. But we keep our base color layer locked. And let's go to color harmony. Make sure you got all selected so you won't miss a color. Mm -mm. Lighter, make the dark shadow a little. When I'm making these cartoon heads, you'll catch me playing with these tones a lot until I finally get it like exactly how I think it should be. This a little orangier, not too much. Or red. for right now Let's go back into it I'm finna mess with edit go to edit color just color balance preview yeah try to make them all flow together I think that's pretty good right there okay We'll switch the darker tone. I'm not feeling that darker tone color right now, but let's go ahead and shade everything out. So we're gonna go back to our mid tone. Select that. Right our pencil tool. We're gonna add all the mid shadows.
I think that's pretty dope right there. Now, we're gonna create another layer under our mid tone, and we're gonna go even lighter. So, we're gonna sample the skin tone. We're gonna find a nice little blend. Okay. Let's try this out real quick. Let's see if I like it. We'll tweak it later. I think it's good for now. We'll tweak it later to make it flow with all the other colors. Let's go ahead and draw out our shadows. Now that we got those shadows laid down, we're gonna select it and we're gonna tweak the color a bit so it'll flow better with the rest of the other colors. We're gonna go back to the lips. Add the mid tones. That's why it's good to put stuff on different layers so it'll be easier to tweak colors. Create us. Let's create us another shadow layer. We're gonna try to go even lighter. We're gonna sample our skin tone. And I think that'll do it. too dark so we're gonna select this look select that shadow we just made and we're gonna tweak it some another color harmony and we're gonna make it See the shadows really shape out your picture. You give it more dimension as well, so
Now, now that we got our shadows just how we want them, we're gonna unlock. We're gonna unlock all our layers. Let's accept the black line work on top, and we're gonna highlight it, and we're gonna try to tweak. I'm gonna try to tweak all these at the same time. See how that go. Go to edit color, adjust color balance, preview. See, can we make everything flow just a little? It came out pretty decent. Now we're gonna highlight everything once again. Go to edit color. And then we're gonna go to color harmony. Go to all. And we're gonna change that. Last shade we did because it's looking too pinkish. Now we finna do the highlights. We're gonna do the highlights. Wait, wait, wait. I wanna go back and tweak these colors some more. Okay, now that we got all the layers and the tones just right, I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna create another layer under all the shadows and we're gonna go through and we're gonna add our highlights. So we're gonna sample the skin tone and we're gonna bring that color up close to close to white and now we're gonna come through and just add our highlights on our picture Okay, we're gonna select all that. We're gonna go to object, expand. We're gonna click merge on our pathfinder and we're gonna drop the opacity down so it won't be too bright. And then we're gonna go right back on top of it into the lighter areas. Go ahead and go ahead and make this white. Now. OK, 
Okay, now that we finish with the coloring or the shading, we're gonna create a line work. I mean, we're gonna create a layer above the line work. And we're gonna add the detail and the eyes and the hair. So, let's come like to go. Still, we're still on our pencil tool. Draw this little fake right here. We're gonna select the color white. And now what you wanna do is you wanna go to your gradient tool. I mean select your gradient color, create you a three pointers and on each end of the pointer you want to make it dark and you want to fade it into like a you can just copy my numbers you know what I'm saying cuz I just really do this uh oh I do this like random but I make both of the edges dark and I kind of fade it going into like a color now we're gonna bring it closer. We're gonna make the center. I'll give it a, a pinkish, purplish look. Okay, that's pretty good for some some details in the hair. Now we're just gonna with our brush tool, we're just gonna draw the hair effect. And there you have it, you guys, how to make a cartoon head remastered using rice gum. If you're new to the channel, you already know what to do. More heat coming soon. And I'm out of this thing.